This video is for educational purposes only and only competent persons should attempt the installations shown in this video. Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel and today I'd like to show you how to install a switched receptacle that is dedicated and marked for a controlled or switched receptacle. These receptacles must be marked with the word controlled and they must have this symbol on them. I'll be going over the 2023 NEC code for marked controlled receptacles, which is Article 406.3F. I'll be including timestamps in my video description so that if you prefer, you can go straight to the code or you could go straight to my diagram of how to wire a marked controlled receptacle, which I'll show and discuss later in the video. Marked controlled receptacles can be used anywhere that you would install a half-hot receptacle. But the marked controlled receptacle can be much less confusing to a homeowner or tenant. Also, in some instances, it's necessary by code to use a marked controlled receptacle. I'll start with the wiring and testing of the switch, which is essential to the installation of the marked controlled receptacle. This is a dual switch box this particular switch controls a porch light and I'm going to be installing another switch next to it that will control the lower half of a receptacle. The top part will be hot all the time and the lower part will be hot when the new switch that I install here is turned on. I currently have the circuit breaker on. Notice that the wires are covered with wire connectors and the switch is wrapped with black electrician's tape and this is for safety. While I have the electricity on to make these tests, everything needs to be very, very safe and I'll have the electricity on just very temporarily while I make the test, then I will turn the electricity right back off. It's by Fluke 1AC voltage sensor. And it's sensing voltage right now. Okay, so the red wire is hot. The red wire going to this port switch is hot. And this black wire, which will also be going to the switch, is not hot. So we have the red wire being hot, and the black wire is not hot at this point. When it's hooked to a switch, and the switch is turned on, the black wire will also be hot. Okay, before I turn the circuit breaker off, I'm gonna make one more test. I have the red lead hooked to the hot red wire here, and I put the black lead to the metal of the box. I have 116 volts AC. So what that tells me is that there's a ground coming behind this metal box. It's the old 1957 grounding method, and so this will be grounded as long as I use self-grounding clip. See, this is a self-grounding clip right here, and the other switch I'm going to put on will also have a self-grounding clip. And I'll make the same test on the receptacle box, and I'm getting 116 volts here as well, which shows that this has a ground wire coming to the back of it. Notice I've wrapped the white neutral wire in white electrician's tape. That's to help insulate the old wire and for color coding as well. I have the circuit breaker turned off now and everything is reading as not hot. So that's a double check and so I'm going to go ahead and install this switch. This switch has a self grinding clip right here so we'll be able to take advantage of the metal grounded box that we tested for. So I'm going to take the red wire and put it to one terminal. Tighten it down securely. These switches, by the way, say top right here. So you put the top on the top. Okay, and there's no ground wire. So I've just screwed in the green grounding terminal. Okay, and I tighten that securely. Push these wires in here. Now I'll wrap this switch 
and black electrical tape as well. Here's something you may encounter when working on old houses. Your switches are bigger than the cheap little switches that they had. There may be a little extra plaster and you need to carefully remove that plaster. Don't damage your walls or so forth, but just carefully remove that little extra plaster so that you can get your new switches into the box. And then we move over to our half hot receptacle and I check out all the wires to make sure they're not hot. And as an additional test, I can put my lead in the wire that we know is hot and this one is the neutral and we have 0, 0.0 volts. And that's a double check so we know that this is not hot. I have this wire wrapped up with black electrician's tape and this one wrapped up with white electrician's tape because this is the neutral. On a marked controlled receptacle, the neutral side terminals are connected together by a brass tab. So you only need one neutral wire to serve both halves of the duplex receptacle. On the hot side of this marked controlled receptacle, there is no brass tab. So both halves of the duplex receptacle require their own source of electrical current. The hot terminal, which serves the top unswitched and uncontrolled portion of the duplex receptacle, will receive the red wire, which is hot all the time. The lower hot terminal, which is the controlled portion of the receptacle, will receive the black wire, which is only hot when it is switched on by the wall switch. First, I'll connect the white neutral wire to either of the silver colored neutral terminals. And I'll tighten it down securely. Next, I'll attach the black wire, which is the switched hot wire, to the brass colored terminal of the controlled portion of the duplex receptacle. I'll tighten it securely. Now, I'll attach the red wire to the brass colored terminal of the uncontrolled portion. This will make this half of the receptacle hot all of the time. I'll tighten securely. After putting some black electrical tape around the terminals for safety, I'll install the marked controlled receptacle in the box. Now I've turned the circuit breaker back on and I have inserted my receptacle tester in the controlled portion of the duplex receptacle. The two green lights indicate correct wiring. When I turn the wall switch off and on, it demonstrates that this portion is controlled by the switch. When I insert the tester into the non-controlled portion, it shows correct wiring, but when I turn the wall switch off and on, it's not affected. Now here is the 2023 NEC for marked controlled receptacles. All non-locking type. 125 volt, 15 and 20 amp receptacles that are controlled by an automatic control device or that incorporate control features that remove power from the receptacle for the purpose of energy management or building automation shall be permanently marked with the symbol shown in figure 406.3F and the word controlled. For receptacles controlled by an automatic control device, the marking shall be located on the receptacle face and visible after installation. In both cases, where a multiple receptacle device is used, the required marking of the word controlled and symbol shall denote which contact devices are controlled. Exception: The marking shall not be required for receptacles controlled by a wall switch that provide the required room lighting outlets as permitted by 210.70. And this is from the 2023 handbook. Many energy efficiency codes require that a percentage of installed 125 volt, 15 and 20 ampere receptacles be controlled by automatic means, such as time clocks or occupancy devices. Controlled receptacles are required to be marked to indicate which receptacles will be automatically de-energized by the controller. This allows 
a different receptacle, like a computer receptacle, to be selected if the load must be supplied during overnight hours. So in my case, I didn't have to use a marked controlled receptacle because I just had a regular switch. But if I would have used an occupancy sensor switch or a timer switch, then I would have been required to use the marked controlled receptacle. I use the marked controlled receptacle simply because it's a lot less confusing for the people living in that house. I have created a diagram to explain how the wiring for marked controlled receptacles works. In this diagram, this is a single pull switch right here, which will operate this half of this receptacle. It's marked, it says controlled right on it, and it has a little power symbol right here. So this is a marked controlled receptacle. This half of the receptacle will operate like a standard receptacle. So here's the power coming into the system. And in my diagram here, I have a 12-2. And it'd be, it would actually be a 12-2 with ground, but I'm not showing the grounds here for clarity. So there isn't too many lines and so forth. And I'm showing the connections outside of the boxes so you can see them easily. Of course, the connections would be made in the boxes which are behind the devices. So here is the power coming into the system. It's a 12-2. Now you'd want to use 12 gauge wire for this because it's going to be running a receptacle. In older houses, generally this is 14-2 cable and that works too. But I just feel that if you have a receptacle, use 12 gauge wire. First, let's discuss the cabling. This is a 12-2 and it brings the current into the switch box. So we call this power to the switch. If you had power to the receptacle, it'd be a little different, but this is a common way to do it with the power to the switch. And then here we have a 12-3 cable going from the switch to the receptacle. So that's your cabling. It's quite simple. We got 12-2 coming in and 12-3 going from the switch to the receptacle. Let's start with the black hot coming in and it's going to come right over here and it's going to get connected together with two other hot wires. We got one hot wire from this 12-3 cable and we have another hot wire. This would be a jumper going over to one of the terminals of the single pole switch. It really doesn't matter which terminal of the single pole switch it go to, but it just goes to one of the terminals. So that's what happens with the black hot wire. It gets hooked together and it serves the single pulse switch as the power for the switch. And this is the power for the portion of the duplex receptacle, which is hot all the time. Now let's look at the neutral. So the neutral comes in and it is not needed for a regular single pulse switch. So it just gets hooked together with the white neutral wire of the 12-3 right here. And of course, this connection would be in the box behind this switch. So this comes over here, goes through the 12-3 cable, and it is connected to either one of these silver terminals. You see, you have the larger slots here on the left-hand side. That's your neutral. And the silver terminals, that's your neutral. Now on this marked controlled receptacle, there's a tab that connects these two silver terminals. That's why it doesn't matter which one you hook the neutral to. So this is going to serve both portions of this duplex receptacle with a neutral. Now, what about this red wire? <laughs> what are we doing with it? Okay, this is why we run 12-3 from the switch to the receptacle. The red wire would go to the opposite terminal on this single pole switch. Sometimes on single pole switches, the two terminals are on the same side of the switch, and sometimes they're on the opposite side of the switch. It really doesn't matter. You just hook this red wire to the other brass colored terminal of the single pole switch, and it's carried over to the receptacle through this 12 3, 
and it comes down here to the controlled portion of the duplex receptacle. Because the marked controlled receptacle comes with no tab on the hot side between the terminals on the hot side, both halves of this duplex receptacle need their own source of power. You see, so when this switch is turned on, the power, that is the current, flows through this red wire and it heats up, as we say, it heats up the controlled portion of this duplex receptacle. When the switch is turned off, there's no current running through this red wire, so the controlled portion of the duplex receptacle is off. Switch on, power on. Switch off, power off. You see, that's, that's what the red wire is for right here. That's why we run a 12-3 between the switch and the receptacle. So that's it in a nutshell. Power comes in, gets split, and you see this heats up the switch here. But it travels out through the red wire. If the switch is on, then this is on. If the switch is off, this is off. This black wire here heats up this portion of the receptacle all the time. So it's not influenced by this switch at all. And the neutral wires just get hooked together and it goes over here to either of the sulfur terminals. So there you go. That's a diagram for marked controlled receptacles. And thanks. I hope this video was helpful. I'll put links in my video description for all of the tools and devices seen in the video.